Hello everybody, welcome back to this series of presentations on design of tension members. So, we are starting the sixth session on design of tension members. In the previous uh, sessions, we had given you some basic introductory remarks with respect to uh, the concepts of uh, uh, design of tension members, okay, different modes of failures, all those things. And then we had done four numerical problems okay, under design of tension members, probably two on plates and then two on angles. So, we will just try to continue okay, some more typical examples on design of tension members. Okay. So, let us try to go back here. right? Now, I think you are very familiar with respect to what we have been, what we have covered here. Okay, the only thing that we are now doing is okay, numerical examples. So let us start. Okay, problem number five. Correct. So problem number five, over here. Right. This happens to be again uh, a bolted connection. Okay, right. Uh, a single angle is what we are trying to have here. So let's try to look at into the problem that we have here. So, design a suitable angle, correct. So, we are just trying to even find out what this angle is, correct. If you just try to check the first problem that we took up, okay, we had given you the angle as well as the bolts, all details were given. Now, in problem number 2, we had given you the angle, but we had not specified how many bolts, correct, we should have over there, uh, correct. So, we did, we did calculate the number of bolts. Whereas, in this particular case, look at this. Okay. So, you are supposed to even okay, just talk about the angle itself. Is it all right? We have to design the angle also. Am I clear? So, what is the angle that we should have here in this particular case? The only thing that we have to we have understood is, okay. so there is a force that has been given to you. Correct. So, this particular connection or this angle okay, should carry a force of 200 k n. Now, when we give a number like this, please understand, is it a factored load or a working load? I make clear because in our design calculations, we always take the factored load. Okay, here we are trying to say, right, to carry a factored force of 210 k n. So, you just try to take as it is, okay, 210. It is, un, it is not unfactored, it is factored load, correct, and uh, m20. So, we are just trying to use 20 mm diameter bolts in this particular case. So, the yield strength and ultimate strength of the material has been given and another important thing is, is okay, the total length of the member is 3 meters. Now, the moment you need to understand, we have not talked about the total length till now. So, the moment you see total length L, so it is uh, back of your mind, you need to understand, yeah, we have to just check the stiffness of that particular member. That means, we have to just calculate the slenderness ratio of that. Okay, and then compare with the appropriate code um, table given in IS 800 2007. Correct. Whenever length is specified in the problem, you have to just calculate the slenderness ratio. That's a very small part. Okay, that we do at the end. Anyway, you have to remember that. So important thing is, okay, we don't know. Okay, what is the angle that we're going to use? So first thing is, we have to find out the angle. Okay, we have to arrive at the angle, right? So let's try to see how we do this particular problem. Now to just try to arrive at the area. To find the area, correct, right? Okay. Again, we are trying to talk about two criteria. We are going to talk about two criteria. Criteria one, due to yielding of gross section. Criteria two, due to net section rupture. So against both of these failure criteria, you can arrive at the value area individually, separately, and then try to pick the larger of the two values. Correct. So that's how simple it is. So let's start with the first one. Okay, based on this criteria, correct? That is the uh, yielding gross of gross cross section. We are trying to calculate AG. Now, please understand. Okay, this is given in this problem. This is given in this problem. This is given in the problem. So we are straight away calculating AG, right? So what is AG? Is what you are going to calculate. In the previous problem, we we AG was given. You are trying to calculate TDG, the reverse process. Now, when I say this is given, what is it we are trying to talk about? Okay, here the factored load is 210 kN, correct? So, we have to just substitute that value in this particular expression, correct? So, we just try to check here, right? So, this is given, okay, 250, this one, correct? Gamma M0, 1.10. Now, coming to this, okay, you are trying to take 
two ten kilonewtons, two one zero k n. What is that? Okay, the factored load that the member has to carry. Correct. Substitute this value, and again we are trying to substitute this. Okay, you have to say two ten into ten to the power of three. You have to convert that to newtons. 210 10 to the power of 3 newtons you have to put it in newtons and whatever area you get will be in millimeter square correct so let's try to just check okay so the value of uh, area i think we have got the numbers here correct so the value of area okay that we did got was 924 millimeter square so the area required with respect to gross section yielding okay right okay with respect to 210 factor load that should be 924 mm square now let's try to go to the second criteria, second failure criteria, that is the net section rupture. You already seen this expression. You already seen this expression, okay, which we used in this the just previous problem. We didn't know the number of bolts, correct? Okay, so we use this expression. Okay, again we are trying to do the same expression here, correct? So this, okay, is nothing but the factored load. This we are assuming, maybe point eight five bolts, correct? So this is given. This is given. So same story. Correct, calculate an, but it is not ag. It is an. An means what? Area after deductions. Okay, so what you need to remember. So let's try to see what the values are. Correct. So we're just trying to take single line bolts, fine numbers. Look at this. Why are we doing this? To pick the value of alpha. You assume this. Okay, you get the value of alpha over here. Okay, these things are available in ACE 800. I make clear, right? Appropriate class. Okay, so class 633, three, open up, you get all these values, correct, right? And then this is given, okay, F, F U, gamma M1, substitute this, okay, and then TDN, factored load, simplify, you get the value as 800.30 mm square. What you get is the net area, am I clear? Net area is what? After deducting for holes. Now, we just try to increase it by say 15 or 20 percent. Thumb rule, okay, 15 to 20 percent. You can increase that value. I make mean, clear to make up that lost area due to hold and get the gross area. So the gross area for this particular case, after deducting, after after trying to account the uh, loss due to bolt holes, okay, is nothing but 920.35 mm square. 920.35 mm square. So we have got two gross areas. One from net. Uh, um, one from gross section yielding and the other is net section rupture. Now we compare the two, correct? So let's, that's what we are trying to do, okay? Step three, okay? So we are trying to say from step one, you got this, correct? From step two, you got this, correct? You compare the two, pick the larger of the two values, pick the larger of the two values, correct? So the larger of the two values is 924, it's almost same. Anyway, we just try to pick 924 here, Correct. So we're just trying to say, okay. So we let's try to pick 924, larger of the two values. Now having got this value, okay, what is the next thing that we do? Okay, open your steel tables, okay, and search, okay, right, an appropriate angle whose area is slightly larger than this, slightly larger than this. Okay, I have chosen, I have chosen 65, 65, 8, two equal legged angles, okay, equal legged angles, two, okay equal legged angles, okay, 65, 65, 8, okay, whose area is 976 mm square, right, okay, it's not necessary that you have to pick this, okay, you can pick any one, okay, you can even pick unequal leg also, okay, provided, okay, the area is larger than this. So, I'm just trying to go ahead with doing the problem, okay, with respect to this particular angle, 65, 65, 8, am I clear? Now, having done this, Correct, that is 65, 65, 8. So let's try to go and then calculate the bolts required. Calculate the number of bolts required. How many bolts we should have? Now, in this particular case, I'm straight away writing this value, correct? So in this particular case, please understand, right? It's only single shear. Unlike the previous case, it's only single shear. Last time it was double shear, correct? The, because there were two angles connected back to back, correct? For a uh, for on, on either side of a gusset plate, okay? Almost back to back. Okay, with some space. Okay, whereas in this particular case, it is only single shear, and we have already done this calculation 20 mm diameter bolt. Okay, so we had got the bolt value as 
45.26. Strictly speaking, if you just try to recollect, we had talked about the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the capacity of the bolt in uh, uh, single shear, capacity of the bolt in bearing, then you have taken the least of the two and then you said that is the bolt value. And the bolt value for 20 mm diameter happened to be 45.26 kN and I have written it directly in this particular case. Is it all right? So, having calculated this, I am just trying to divide okay, the, the load, vectored load by the bolt hold. Am I clear? I hope this is clear, right? Okay. So, this is nothing but this is nothing but the factored load. Okay. It has to carry 210 kN force. Am I clear? And if one bolt hold can carry a force of 45.26, how many bolts are required? Is what we are trying to do right now. Okay. So, divide the load by the capacity of one bolt that should give you that has given you 4.64 bolts. You cannot put 4.64, it has to be whole number. Correct. So, we are trying to pick right, right, okay, 5 bolts, okay, one larger, okay, the nearest integer, okay, higher integer is what we are trying to say. There is 5 bolts, okay, and we are trying to assume a pitch of 60 millimeters and end, end distance of uh, 40, correct. So, appropriate plus 10.12, okay, I hope you remember, right. So, just try to pick these values from that. Now, your connection is ready. I make clear, I hope you are trying to understand. So, I have designed this angle. So, this angle is 65 by 65 by 8, correct, and number of bolt is 5 numbers, okay, one behind the other, okay, with a pitch distance of 60 and end distance of 40. So, that means everything is ready. Now, once you have done this, okay, we start from square 1, okay, we just try to calculate the uh, different a, different values of strength, okay. So, we start from again the basic things, okay. Go back to the first bolt, first angle problem. So, we said there are three failure criteria. What is the capacity of that with respect to gross section yielding, okay, net section, all those things you can go on trying to do and then pick the, pick the least. So, coming to the first failure criteria, yielding of gross section. So, that is the expression that we have here. Tdg equal to Ag into F5 gamma M0. Now, since you know the angle, okay, that is you already done this 65, 65, 8, okay, you know Ag, you know F5, you know gamma M0, just try to calculate. Obviously, this will be more than 210. You can clearly look at that, okay. So, this is uh, 250 mega Pascals, that is your Fy, okay, Ag is 976, that is 65, 65, 8 angle, single angle, correct, 1.10. So, this is 211.80 kN. This is definitely more than 210, okay. The factored load it has to carry is 210. So, definitely, okay, it does not, it will not fail under gross section yielding, okay, when you are just trying to apply that factored load, correct. So, anyway, this is fine for us, okay. Now, let us try to go to the next one, okay. What is the next one, okay? Net section rupture, the second failure criteria. Since you know everything, correct, the, the, the bolts, everything, we are using this expression. We are not using the expression alpha times F u a n divided by okay, uh, uh, I mean, uh, gamma m 1. We are not using that because I know everything. Okay, The entire connection is there, that is bolts, correct. Hence, I am using this actual expression Okay, given in 633, correct, 633. So, that is 0.9 a n c is something but the area of the connected leg, net area of the connected leg, Okay, F u ultimate stress. Uh, partial safety factor gamma m1 beta we have a different expression coming up okay gross area of the outstanding leg yield stress and gamma m0 m0 that's the psf okay now this beta correct right is computed from this relation correct we have seen these numbers i hope you this expression okay the first problem in uh, session uh, 5 correct 1.4 minus 0.076 w by t fu fy by fu bs by lc Correct. So, uh, in this case, W is nothing but uh, 65 length of the outstanding leg, thickness of the outstanding leg, correct, FY, FU, the yield strength and uh, uh, ultimate strength and BS and LC, that is the shear lag uh, le length and the length of the connection, okay, uh, distance from first bolt to hold, ball, last bolt hold. And again, beta should lie between two numbers as we are know, as we know 0 0.7 and this value, okay. So, whatever value beta that you compute should lie between the two, we have to check that, all right. Okay, so let's try to go ahead and then calculate these values. Okay, so in this particular case, W, the ratio of W by T. So this is W, distance 65. T is this 8 mm. Okay, so I hope you are you know this. Okay, now coming to the next one. Okay, it is nothing but it is nothing but right, BS, distance from here to here. Correct. So that is here. It is 65. Okay, and this distance is 35. You can clearly see 
distance from okay the tip of the outstanding leg to the center line of the first bolt holds okay if there are more than one bolt hole also correct here there are two bolt holes still it will be up to only the first bolt hole is what you need to understand correct so uh, you have to be very clear about that okay you have to be very clear about that distance from here to here distance from here to here it is 65 okay plus 35 and then you will be accounting the thickness two times one in this direction one in this direction you have to deduct one thickness thickness 8 mm correct so this is what you have here 65 plus 35 minus one thickness that has given you the value of bs okay and then the length of the connection so what is the length from the first bolt to the last bolt okay how many we have one two three four right one two three four four spacings pitch 16 to 4 so 4 into 60 okay that is 240 so that is the length of the connection correct you have you have calculated all the values required now you can easily calculate beta correct so the value of beta that we have got here is correct in this particular case 1.26 and since it's lying between okay 0.7 and 1.41 so we are going to freeze the value of beta as 1.26 no problem correct right it's it's absolutely fine okay it's not less than this or more, more than this so we we keep that value 1.26 correct now we are going to we are going to calculate the net area of this and the gross area of the outstanding leg net area of the connected leg and the gross area of the outstanding leg so let's try to look into this particular calculation is it all right now how do i calculate the net area here so what is the length from here to here 65 65 okay so what is the diameter of the hole it is 20 mm bolt plus 2 22 so 65 minus 22 and then we have to again deduct half thickness that is 8 by 2 that will give the net uh, length okay multiplied by thickness 8 that should give you okay a n c what is a n c net area of the connected leg so we have a n c as 65 this minus one bolt hole one bolt hole correct minus half thickness okay so that will give the net length multiplied by thickness okay that will give you the net area of this leg connected leg now for outstanding leg there is no bolt hole all you have to do is total length minus one half thickness that is 65 minus 8 by 2 okay that will give you the length in this direction multiplied by thickness 8 that will give you the area of the outstanding leg okay am i clear so that is gross area of the outstanding leg that is 65 minus 8 by 2 into 8 that has given you this okay now with this information you can easily calculate okay tdn okay the design strength due to net section rupture correct so let's try to see that okay now due to this the net section rupture tdn happens to be 231.85 kn correct so we have just previously we calculated tdg that is your design strength due to gross section yielding now we have calculated tdn tdn is nothing but the design strength due to net section rupture okay now we have to go to the net last uh, failure criteria that is block shear strength okay am i clear so let's try to do that okay right so let's try to see the last failure criteria that we have here so block shear failure correct right so let's try to see this is how the uh, section looks like section looks like single angle in this case it's only single angle so it is 65 65 8 correct so let's try to see how we are trying to assume the failure plane path i hope you now are very clear about that so we start along the bolt holes something like this till the from the end to the last bolt hole and then it has to take a left turn or right turn correct so right turn outstanding leg left turn okay it's simple so the failure path would be like that so that means if the failure path okay progresses completes like that this section okay can fly off and separate from the gazette plate okay so we say okay the section has failed or the connection has failed due to block shear failure so in this case two failure paths one path one path two okay mutually perpendicular one is the shear path other is the tension path okay so let's try to see, see that so that's a that's a direction okay that's a failure path there is a shear failure path and tension failure path correct so look at this how many bolts one two three four five five bolts correct one two three four fifth it's not complete half okay and then it turns so obviously in this particular uh, discussion so we just try to take this particular figure and then calculate what is the gross area in this plane what is the net area in this plane what is the gross area in this plane what is the net area in that plane so that means avg avn atg atn so let's try quickly look into that okay so let's start 
okay the same one so what is the what is the distance from a to b 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60 that would be 240 correct plus 40 okay 280 right the length from here to here is 280 multiplied by thickness okay that is 8 mm correct so we have here 60 into uh, uh, 60 into 4 that is 240 plus 40 280 into 8 that is 2240 mm square that is a gross area in this direction of this ab okay we are going to call it as a shear plane that is shear gross area avg coming to avn you have to deduct okay the bolt holes 1 2 3 4.5 4.5 correct so from this total length of 280 you deduct minus 4.5 times 22 it's not 20 bolt hole correct so we have here 6 into 16 to 4 okay right plus 40 correct right minus 4.5 into 22 correct multiplied by the thickness that will give you the net area obviously net area is always less than the gross area right you can easily understand correct so we have what avn now coming to this direction we have to have atg how do you calculate atg it is 30 multiplied by thickness okay that is 8 8 into 30 okay that is 240 you have this here correct now coming to the net area you have to direct half bolt hole diameter correct so half bolt hole is 22 by 2 that is 11 or 0 0.5 times 22 correct so we have here 30 minus 11 into 8 that will give you 152 correct so you got all these numbers okay now we are going to calculate the block shear strength okay under two different uh, formulas or expressions given in the code criteria 1 criteria 2 so coming up the first criteria tdb1 i hope now you are all very familiar with this expression okay right so class 641 correct so that is avg and atn gross for shear and net for tension everything is there substitute simplify you get okay tdb1 i make clear so we have a different expression for tdb2 for tdb2 got a different expression correct substitute you get a different value tdb2 compare the two the lesser of the two will be the block shear strength that is tdb correct so the, the lesser of the two that is tdb TB, uh, tdb2 that is 301 point uh, 3, 3 that has to be taken as TDB. I make clear now we compare the three values what are the three values okay uh, TD, TDG, TDN and TDB okay there is the design strength okay due to gross yielding design strength due to net section rupture and design strength due to block shear failure okay so compare the three right obviously in this particular case I think this is the least this is the least 221.80 so obviously the strength of this particular joint is nothing but 221.80 k correct so that's a, that's the least and please understand most important thing is yeah this is more than 210 k what is this 210 k in the initial problem we said okay it has to carry a force of factored force of 210 k now we are trying to say that look okay so this the least strength of this particular thing is this this entire uh, connection everything okay is 221.80 kn right you are applying a force less than that factored force less than that so obviously it is safe right is safe is what you need to understand okay if it is unsafe obviously to go and revise and then try to see that okay this value whatever you get okay right should be more than this now coming to the last part okay we had given you the length of the member correct so let's try to look into that okay length of the member right so now what is the length that has been given 3000 mm we are calculating the slenderness ratio okay of this particular section correct now we have used right we have used for uh, 65 65 correct 8 look into the steel tables look into the steel tables okay and try to get r minimum you got RXX, you got RYY, you got RUU, you got RVV. Am I clear? So pick the least of all the four values. In this case, it is RVV is the least RVV, okay, which is 12.5 mm. Am I clear? So open your steel tables, go to 65, 65 section, okay. There will be four R's that we are trying to talk about. Take the least, okay, and that is 12.5. Now get the slenderness ratio L by R, 3000. Okay, by this value that is 240, correct, and it is less than 350 
okay, specified in table 3 of IS 800 2007. Am I clear? Right? So, because it is less, so we are trying to say section is safe. Okay? So, whenever length is given, you have to just try to check this small part. Okay? So, we just try to calculate the stress ratio and look at the code and then try to okay, say whether it is safe or unsafe with respect to the stiffness criteria. So, I hope this problem was uh, uh, quite interesting to you. Okay, so, we had uh, talked about uh, three uh, bolt problem, bolt connection connection problem, tension members. Okay, first problem, okay, everything is given, the angle is given and the connection uh, details are given. Problem number two, that is your uh, strictly speaking problem number uh, three, okay, we had given you the angle, we had not given you the bolt, okay, we had not specified bolt, okay, we did the problem, okay, and problem number uh, five, okay, so we had neither given you the angle section nor the uh, bolts. Correct, and we have done everything. You can clearly see that. Okay, so for this problem, obviously, what load it has to carry should be specified, and it was given. So we can arbitrarily give some value of force, and then you can just try to follow these steps, and then try to okay arrive at some section, appropriate section. Correct. So I hope we have understood this particular numerical problem. So we'll go to the next one. So the next one, okay, that uh, I think we are just trying to talk about, okay, is with respect to weld. Okay welded joints okay tension member of welded joints is it all right again angle okay angle members okay that is welded joints so that would be problem number 6 okay so let's try to see this problem okay a single unequal angle right a single unequal angle right you can clearly see this 175 by 6 is connected to a gusset plate okay gusset plate okay 8 mm thick so that is a gusset plate that is the angle Okay, that is uh, uh, put here and you are just trying to connect the two okay, by a weld, okay, right. Okay, now he says that the average length of the weld is 225, the average length, right. What do you mean by average length? Now, please understand, okay, you are trying to see weld at the top of the angle and the bottom of the angle, correct? Is it all right? So, that is how it gets connected. So, this is in cross section. We just try to look in elevation, elevation. So, this entire thing is the weld length and this entire thing is the weld length. I make clear, did you understand? Now, what you need to notice here is, okay, this weld length and this weld length generally, okay, are not of same length, generally not of same length. Why? Okay, now, please understand that, uh, okay, in this particular case, right, in this particular case, okay, the section, whatever we are trying to give, which is nothing but the angle here, angle here, correct, the angle is not a symmetric kind of a section. What do you mean by symmetric? Okay, so look at this. The angle is here. Okay, if you just look at the CG, the CG is somewhere here. The CG is somewhere here. I make clear. The section is not symmetric with respect to the CG line. I make clear. Did you understand? Right? It's not symmetric. Okay, below and above. Correct. So whenever we have such kind of situations, correct okay, angles. Okay, like this. Okay, the force transferred, the force transferred, okay, in this region, okay, and in this region, obviously will be different, obviously will be different, correct. So, the force transferred along this line definitely is more than the force transferred here, correct. So, please understand that you need more length weld, okay, that is length of the weld here when compared to that, correct. Is it all right? So, wherever the CG line is less here, Okay, this attracts more force. This is a farther distance. Okay, here, okay, the, 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 the weld here definitely is should be less, quantity of weld is less, whereas the quantity of weld, weld, weld length is more here because it is more closer to CG. It attracts more force, correct, is what you need to understand. Now, in the problem, he is trying to say that, he is trying to say that the average length Okay, the average length is 225. That means this is L1, that is L2, maybe this is average length. Okay, L average, L average. So that means you can remove this and place it here. So this is average length of the weld. The average length of the weld is given as 225 mm in this particular case. Am I make clear? And he also says that the longer leg, longer leg is connected to the gazette. Okay, the uh, yield and uh, ultimate strengths are given, material is given. I hope now you have understood the problem, correct. 
right. So, let us try to look into the problem and let us try to see how we solve this particular problem again, right. So, whether it is bolted connection or whether it is welded connection, correct. So, we just talk about the same three criteria, okay, yielding of gross section, net section rupture, okay, and then finally, the block shear failure. Did you understand, right. So, let us try to take one by one, okay, right. Let us start with the first one, okay, gross section yielding. You will be trying to take all these failure criteria one by one, you will be calculating the strength, okay, due to all these three failure criteria, compare, take the least and say this is the strength of that particular uh, section, is it all right connection, uh, the entire uh, uh, section is what we are trying to talk about. So, first one, okay, gross section yielding, gross section yielding, right, clause 6.2, you have the expression. You still use the same expression, whether it is bolted or welded, same expression. What is the expression? Fy Ag by Mi M0, Fy yield stress 250, Ag, the total area, total area, correct, total area, am I clear, right, of this angle, okay, that is 175.6 Ag, available in steel tables, gamma M0, 1.1, okay. So, let us try to substitute these values, okay, 250 correct, this is available in steel tables, okay, ISA, ISA 175.6, you get this value, okay, gamma M0, okay. So, you just try to simplify, put that here, all the three numbers, okay, get the value of TDG, okay, obviously, you will convert Newton to KN and you get this value 230.45 KN, am I clear? So, once we have finished the first criteria, gross cross section yielding, we go to the next one, that is nothing but the net section rupture correct? Is it all right? So, let us try to go to criteria 2, okay, net section rupture, net section rupture. Again, the same expression, okay, that we used in case of bolts, correct? Same expression, okay, right? If you know everything, their bolt, that means the, uh, 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 the size of angle, number of bolts, this is the expression we used. So, it is trying to use the same thing here, right? So, two parts, connected leg, outstanding leg, everything and we have this beta also, we have this beta. Okay, am I clear in this particular expression? So, how do we calculate beta? You got a different expression here, right? And when we are doing this, this value of B s, okay, will be slightly different. You are going to see that. You are going to be slightly different, okay? So, this is nothing but the length of the outstanding leg, thickness of the outstanding leg, Fy, Fu, yield strength and ultimate strength. Lc is the average length of the connection, that is 225, okay? This is what is given and B s is slightly different. In this case, you have need to notice that properly and this beta should lie between 0.7 and this number, okay? All those same things. So, let us try to see this, okay? So, Fy, okay, Fu, gamma M0, gamma M1, everything is given, correct? Then W, look at this W, correct? So, W is still the same, length of the outstanding leg, the distance 75, correct? And this is T, thickness of this, okay, 6 mm, is it all right? So, 75 and 6, it still is the same, okay? Even in bolted connection, it was the same, correct? Bolted connection, it was still the same, correct? Now is BS, this is important. Now, in case of BS, we started from the tip and then went all around, okay, till what? Till the first bolt hole, that is what we did in case of bolted connection. Whereas, in case of welded connection, okay, you start, okay, from here and then, okay, you go and then reach the first weld, okay, the weld is somewhere here, you stop. So, in this particular case, this length of the outstanding leg will be equal to B s. Am I clear, right? I think you just try to look at the theory that we had talked about. So, we, we have told you very clearly and this figure is available in IS 800. Please have a look at it, how to calculate B s. It starts from the outstanding leg in case of welded connection and goes up to the weld. So, in this case, it is 75 whether it is W or whether it is B s, okay, they are the same in this particular case. Now, coming to LC, length of the connection, correct? Look at this, length of the connection is this one, LC, average length, average length, okay? L2 plus L1 by 2, correct? Right is average value and this is given in this particular case, correct? So, you can just write, take this value, okay? Substitute, simplify, you get the value of beta you get the value of beta, correct? So, the value of beta in this particular case, correct, happens to be 1.20, right, over there. I make clear? I hope, uh, uh, if I just try to check, yeah, that is fine. 
Okay, so beta is 1.20, right? It lies between 0.7 and 1.41. Yeah, that's fine. Correct. Now there is one important discussion, okay, that we are trying to talk about in this case. If you just try to notice this properly, we have what is called as the net area of the connected leg, net area. Now please understand, in case of welded uh, I mean, uh, connection, there are no bolt holes. Though it says net area, it would be the gross area of the connected leg. Because look at this, okay, we have not done any hole here. We have, there is no bolt, we have not accommodated any opening, correct? Right? Just like you calculate AGO, you calculate AGC, it is the same thing, A, A, A and C. How do I calculate this area? Okay, distance of this leg, it is 100, correct? And then we have to deduct half the thickness, that is 6 by 2. 100 minus 6 by 2 is 3, 100 minus 3 is 97. So 97 into 6 should give you this A and C straight away. Am I clear? Did you understand? So you can clearly see 100 minus 6 by 2 into 6 will give this value of A and C. We do not have bolt holes to account here, but in case of bolted connection, you should have, you mean we would have deducted again another 22 over there, assuming 20 is a bolt, bolt hole over there, correct? Now coming to all, uh, outstanding leg, the calculation is very safe, correct? 75, this one minus half thickness, that is 6 by 2 into thickness, that is 6, okay? That should give you your value of A, G, O, okay? Gross area of the outstanding leg, 75 minus half thickness into thickness, okay, will give you, okay, the value of uh, A, G, O. So, substitute this here, okay, simplify, you get the value of T, D, N, right? Second failure criteria, you got this value, correct? Now, coming to the third failure criteria, that is the block shear, block shear, correct? Now, in this particular case, notice this properly. I have not put L1, I have not put L2. I have written LC. What is LC? The average length of the connection. The average length of the connection, okay, given is what? 225, okay. The average length of the connection. So, it is given as 225 mm, correct. So, L1 plus L2 by 2 is 225. So, this is 225, okay. I have taken this Okay, for the calculation purpose, I have taken this for the calculation purpose. And again, if you just try to read the code properly, okay, so we are going to define the failure path. Last time we had bolt, so we said it goes along the bolt holes, there is no bolts here, please understand. So in this case, we are going to take the failure path around the weld, around the weld. So look at this, the weld is here and here. So, if you look at this properly, I think we have written a red line here, okay. So, we have marked a red line, okay. It starts like this, okay, and then comes here and then goes here, correct. So, that means the, the, the uh, failure takes place around the bolt hole. What, what is it cutting, okay? Where is the failure happening? The failure is happening in the gazette, please understand. Last time the failure happened in the angle, here it is not angle which is failing, it is the gazette plate which is failing because the failure path progresses like this next to the weld, okay, comes here, okay, again, then it joins, okay. So the failure has happened in the gazette plate, please remember this properly. Am I clear, right? So this is a very important aspect that we are trying to talk about. Now having done this, having done this, let us try to identify the planes. Okay, so we have just talked about the failure. Okay, so failure path is what A, B, B, C, and C, D. Am I clear? Did you understand? So four failure paths is I mean three failure paths. Okay, path one, path two, and path three. So of of these three paths, okay, A, B, and C, D are parallel to the force, are parallel to the tensile force, parallel to the tensile force. So obviously, A, B and C, D, okay, on this, okay, we have the shear stress, we have the shear, shear planes or shear stress, whereas for B, C, okay, right, the, the, the direction of force is perpendicular to the plane, it is tension plane. So these two are shear planes and this is tension plane. Am I clear? So we have noticed it properly, shear plane A, B, C, D, tension plane B, C. Am I clear? I hope you have understood. The first thing is, how do you identify the failure path? It is around the weld, correct? And in this case, the gusset is failing, unlike the previous case where we said angle fails, 
Did you understand? So notice this changes appropriately. Now we are going to calculate okay, a few things. Okay. What are they? What are we calculating? That is AVG, AVN. That is the net area of the shear plane and the gross area of the shear plane. Now please understand again, okay, there is no bolt hole. Correct? Did you understand? So in that case, the net area and the gross area are the same. Okay, it'll not be different because when I say what is the gross area, right? It's something but the, the value of LC, width multiplied by thickness. It is LC multiplied by thickness of the gusset plate, 8 mm, thickness of the gusset plate. You should not take the thickness of the angle. Am I clear? So it is LC multiplied by 8. That will give the area of this gross area of the shear plate. That is the shear plate. Correct? When I say net area, there is no bolt hole. So still ANC is the same as, okay, that is AV, AVN is, A, AVN is the same as AVG, right? So we are going to see that. And here there are two planes, plane 1 and plane 2. So we are going to say two numbers, okay? So LC, this is LC, average length, multiplied by the thickness of the gusset plate, 8 mm. Am I clear? Right? Multiplied by 2. That has given you okay avg now look at this okay avn is the same as avg avn is the same as avg right again it is 3600 mm square now coming to the next one okay what is the gross area of the tension plane this is a tension plane what is the gross area right so you know this angle okay right what is the angle length that we are trying to talk about it is 175 by 8 so this is 100 Correct? So 100 multiplied by thickness of the plate, 100 into 8. Correct? So that is the gross area of the tension plane. Because there are no bolt holes here, the gross area is equal to the net area. So that means ATG equal to ATN. So this is what we have written. Correct? So this and this right, are the same. Correct? So the two values are same. This is what you can easily understand. So here also the two values are same. Correct? So gross area, net area for both shear and tension planes remain the same in this particular case. Now with that information, now we are ready to use two formulas given in the code that is TDB1 and TDB2. So from TDB1 you got this value, from TDB2 you got this value. I think we have been using this particular formula repeatedly in all the problems. I hope now you are getting your, your, yourself used to uh, writing these formulas okay, which are available in your code 641. So from first expression calculate TDB1, second expression calculate TDB2, compare the two okay, and get the minimum of that. So minimum of that in this particular case is from TDB1, okay, that is what we have here. Now having done this, okay, you can compare all the three, all the three and then check okay, what is the strength that we are trying to have here. Right? From criteria 1, it is 230, criteria 2, it is 306, criteria 3, it is 702, correct? This is quite high. Okay, anyway, it fails in criteria, I mean under gross section yielding, that is 230.5, okay, is what we are trying to say, 230.45. Am I clear? Right? Now, coming to the next important thing that we, that we are trying to do right now, important thing. What is the important thing that we are trying to attempt right now? So, we said the average length is 225. Now, what will be the value of L1 and L2 is what now we are trying to look at. Am I clear? So that's a very important thing that we are trying to talk about in this particular discussion. Correct? Now look at this. So we said the average value here is 225. 225. Correct? But we don't put, okay, weld like this, okay? We don't put 225 here and here. Okay? Right? It's not, it's not correct because, okay, this one requires more than 225. This requires less than 225. So what now we are trying to attempt okay, to just arrive at these values of L1 and L2. Okay? We are trying to arrive at the values of L1 and L2. Okay? It is quite simple. You can easily understand okay, how we can do that. Okay? Right? So look at this. Okay? So this is the angle that we are trying to have here, 100. Okay? This CG, CG right, is, is given in the IS uh, uh, I mean steel tables. Right? If you just try to look at IS steel tables, you can easily mark Okay, the know, know the centroid, okay, centroid of this particular section. So centroid is 30.1 from here. So if you just deduct from 100, 30.1, you get 69.9. So what now we are trying to see is, okay, use this information, okay, to effectively calculate the values of L1 and L2 here. 
correct? We are going to calculate the value of L1, okay? Now look at this, okay? The length of the weld, okay? Sorry, the length of the weld, right? At the two edges of the connecting leg, okay, should be proportional to the force it carries. So what we are trying to say is, okay, this is going to carry some force T2 and this is going to carry some force T1, T1. Correct? We are going to say this length, this weld is going to carry some force T1 and this is going to carry some force T2. So obviously the length of the weld should be proportional to the force it carries. So that means L1 is proportional to L T1 and L2 should be proportional to T2. Am I clear? Right? And further we are trying to say that, okay, in this particular case, okay, T2, okay, in this particular case, okay, the value of T1 is more than T2. Why? Because it is more closer to the CG. Okay, that's what you need to notice in this particular case. Now we have noticed that, okay, the total design strength, okay, the total force, okay, it's going to carry, okay, that is at which it's going to fail, okay, is 230.45 kilonewtons, 230.45 kilonewtons, correct? Now what I'm trying to uh, do right now is, okay, when I'm just trying to talk about uh, the weld that has been suggested, if you just try to recollect, we said that the size of the weld is what? 4 millimeters size of the weld is 4 millimeters that has been given in the problem that has been given in the problem so what i'm trying to do is okay what is the carrying what is the uh, load carrying capacity of the weld for 1 millimeter length for 1 millimeter length okay what is the force it can take is what i'm trying to first calculate okay what is the force it can take for 1 mm length okay a, a 4 mm fillet weld right Okay, for a distance of 1 mm, what is the force it can take? I'm just trying to calculate that value here, right? So I'm just trying to use class 10.5.71. 10 okay, I'm just trying to calculate the tensile strength, okay, of the weld, okay, design strength of weld, assuming, assuming the length of the weld as 1 mm. Okay, this is the throat thickness, 0.7 times 4, correct? So this is known, gamma m1 substitute. So you're going to notice that, okay, the strength of the weld, Okay, for 1 mm can carry a force of 5, 1, 0.517 uh, new kilonewtons. So that means, so this is nothing but it takes 517 newtons. That means 1 mm length can take 517 uh, um, mm length, correct? Now I'm just trying to cross check. I'm just trying to cross check. So this is this is the actual strength it's going to carry. Okay, 1 mm, 1 mm length, okay, takes a force of 0.517. This is the average length that we have here. When I say average, you got both at top and bottom. So the total length of the weld is 450. When you multiply this with this, right, the force that the, that 225 length is going to take is 232.65. Definitely, it is more than 230. So that means whatever weld length, average weld length that was given in the problem is correct. I'm just trying to first just try to ascertain this whether the total length given is fine or not. Now, having just ensured this additionally, now I just try to come up with my calculation. So, this is what I said. So, T1 is the force carried by L1, T2 is the force carried by L2, correct? Now, how do you calculate T1? So, I said 1 mm length, 1 mm length, correct? The force it is going to take is 0.517 kN. Okay, for 1 mm length, it's taking 0.517. So what is the total length of the weld? L1, correct? So this T1 should be L1 times 0.4517. So that's what I, I have said here. Similarly, T2, 1 mm length, 0.517 kN. What is the total length? L2. So T2 will be taking this value. I hope you are trying to understand this properly, correct? So once I have done this, I just try to say, correct? I just try to take the equate the moment of this force, okay, with the moment of this force about CG. What is the moment of T1 about CG? It is force into distance. T1, correct, into 30.1, moment of T1 about CG. What is moment of T2 about CG? T2 into 69.9. I'm just trying to take equate the moment of T1, okay, and the moment of T2 with respect to CG, correct? But what is T1 and T2? You have seen that in the previous slide. So T1 is L1, 0.517 or 0.517 L1, 0.517 L2, which I'm going to substitute here, correct? Okay, which I'm going to substitute, okay? So this is the moment of T1, moment of T2, okay? This is T1 and that is T2, that is T2, okay? 0.517 L1, 
0.517 L2. So, we can clearly notice that this 517 will 517 will go. So, it is nothing but 30.1 L1, 69.9 L2. Okay. This I call as equation 1, call as equation 1. But the summation of L1 and L2 okay, is nothing but 2 times LC. You got LC at the top, you got LC at the bottom. Okay. So, total summation is 450. So, there are 2 equations, 2 unknowns, 2 equations, 2 unknowns solve. Okay, solve. Okay, get the values of L1 and L2. I make clear. Get the values of L1 and L2. I'm just trying to slightly round it off to a slightly higher uh, value. Okay, right, which is possible for you to measure. So 314, I'm calling that as 320, and 135, I'm calling that as 140. So I hope you understand. Okay, how this particular L1 and L2 are arrived. Okay, it's quite simple. I make clear, right? So with this, I'm just trying to show the last slide of this particular numerical problem. So that means, okay, so right now, okay, L, L1 is 320 mm, okay, this is the weld in and this is uh, L2, which is 140 mm. I make clear, did you understand? So the average of this obviously would be somewhere around uh, 225, okay, more than that slightly could be. So this is uh, how you are trying to proportion, okay, the two welds. So please understand that, okay, it's not correct to uh, uh, have uh, equal weld lengths or 225 at the top or 225 at the bottom, okay, because this will fail if you are trying to do that because you require more weld length because the, the uh, value of T1 definitely is more than T2. I make clear, did you understand, right? So you cannot provide two equal length welds for unsymmetrical sections, right? I hope you have understood uh, this particular problem uh, uh, that is with respect to uh, welded uh, 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 tension members. So we have uh, some more examples coming up. So I think uh, we'll be trying to discuss those examples uh, in the next uh, session, okay, that we are trying to take, right? So I hope this was a good learning experience, okay, with respect to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, design of uh, uh, I mean, uh, tension members, okay. So, we had just introduced you to one problem in uh, welded connection. Hope that you enjoyed, okay, listening to this particular presentation. Anyway, thank you, okay. We will just try to come back again and then continue the discussion in the next session.